Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of Trader.com uh, nightly update show. Hope everybody is doing well. Hope everybody had uh, a good trading day. Thank you very much for tuning in, especially for you new folks uh, who are stumbling into our channel. Uh, all we ask is if you like it, just like it, uh, subscribe, share, all that good stuff, and then we'll uh, handle the rest. So really quickly, because I have to go take uh, my daughter to, to basketball practice. Uh, if you watched last night's video, uh, again, we talked about very, very specific numbers. We talked about uh, that October 12th high of 373.70s, right? That was going to be a major, major area for the Bulls to possibly either reclaim or get rejected. If you watch the video, you can see exactly what happened today, right? We got rejected perfectly at the top of the range. Look at the high of the day. The high of the day is literally 373.70s. It got rejected perfectly at the high of the day. Uh, the queue started pulling in. You know, they got rejected about you know, two and a half, three dollars from the highs. They came back in. Here's the crazy part, right? Here's the crazy part about the cues coming in. The rejection was perfect. Again, congratulations for all you guys uh, who did take it. And again, like I said in last night's video, for all you guys tuning in, the least I can do uh, is give you very specific prices uh, on the cues. So thank you very much. Hopefully uh, you participate and hopefully made some money uh, on our research. So here's the most ironic part about uh, the rejection today on the cues. Nothing went down, right? And you can say, you can turn around and say, well, how how can nothing go down if the accused got rejected? Well, there's a di there's a big difference between a stock going red and a stock moving lower, right? Uh, look at you know, look at a name for example, uh, you know, look at a name for example like uh, Amazon, right? Amazon was red today, but it's not going lower, right? What why is it not going lower? Because it didn't take out the previous day's low. And that's kind of my point. If you look at the majority of names, whether they were up today or down today on that re rejection, that perfect, perfect rejection, uh, like I called yesterday a pregnant pause, right? If you look at the majority of the names, they did not take out the previous day's low. And that's the most important part. So even if you look at the cues on that perfect rejection, you can see here on the 60 minute view what happened here, right? So they got rejected off the 60 minute view perfectly in the 7370s. Went all the way down to uh, 37060. So again, this is a you know three uh, three plus point rejection uh, off the top of the range, but in a bull market fashion, they started creeping back. And the cool part about it is, even with that rejection, guess what didn't happen? Right, the Qs did not take out the previous day's low. Look at Amazon, right? Did not take out the previous day's low. Look at Microsoft. Kept on price improvement. Look at Nvidia. We keep on talking Nvidia from that breakout in 350. Nvidia wants 476. It looks like it's just a magnet at the 476 uh, prior to uh, the 1121 earnings report. This thing just keeps on going. Apple just keeps on going. Square today woke up on its earnings highs, keeps on going. So it's very, very, it must be incredibly frustrating from bears, even when you get a perfect rejection. And most traders did not know that perfect rejection was there. Okay, I'm not saying I reinvented the wheel, but again, after 25 years, you kind of know what to, what to look for. Uh, the most important part and the most interesting part is, you know, the NASDAQ now is up, what, eight, nine days in a row? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? Tomorrow will be uh, day nine. And again, the key, the thing you keep on hearing is they can't go higher. It can't go higher and can't go higher until it goes higher. And that's the most important part. How do we know there's going to be a back test starting, right? How do we know? It's very simple, okay? It needs to take out the previous day's range. So what was today's range, right? Today's range on the Qs with 37060, right? You don't have to guess. If you're trading the ETF side, that is your range. If we start tomorrow, start losing 37060, yes, we're going to start getting pulled. If Amazon tomorrow starts losing today's lows of 4120s, we're probably gonna get, we're probably going to pull back. So whatever your stock you're looking at, again, we and the theme this week has been don't guess, right? Don't guess. We're still putting in higher lows and higher highs, don't guess. All they need to start doing is building below the previous day's range. Building, the word building is the price action needs to, to start and continue below the previous day's channel. That's what the word building is. So right now, the bulls are still in control. Uh, you have Disney coming out with earnings uh, today after the close. 
uh, looked pretty good. Looks pretty good so far, about uh, nearly a 4% rise. Uh, there was chatter today uh, throughout the day that Disney and potentially ESPN and the NFL and the NBA could be maybe working out some sort of deal. Again, I, I, I'm a big fan of sports. I know a lot of you guys are as well, but uh, ESPN is is one of their you know hemorrhaging businesses. Not great. That's why they fi uh, they fired like seventy you know on air personalities uh, you know about three four months ago. But uh, Disney is uh, surging today uh, after the close. Uh, is everything surging? Not everything is surging. Like look at the name for example, like Tesla. And it, it, here's a very very interesting chart. If you if you if you notice, I haven't talked about really Tesla for the last couple of days because Tesla's been in this really, really tight channel, right? It's been losing the 200-day moving average, reclaiming it, and you could see how tight this channel is. And it's not going higher, it's not going lower, but in the last three days, you can see it's putting in one, two, three days in a row of at least higher lows. And that's a big thing, and it keeps on, it keeps on holding the five-day moving average. I'm watching Tesla for the next day or so, okay? I don't know which way yet. That's the whole point. I don't know which way yet. Uh, it's 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 obviously putting in lower high, excuse me higher lows, but it's not going higher. Um, ironically, we are seeing some pretty good call buying coming in. You know, ten dollars out of the money, fifteen dollars of money with absolutely no price action. Do they know something? Do they not know something? Anything we don't know yet. But I'm waiting for the price action. So I'm definitely waiting either below the five day moving average for the buyers to kind of gas out and die. Or we're watching the top of the range here, which a couple of times now, uh, the bulls have gotten rejected off this level. It's one, definitely a name uh, we want to watch uh, for tomorrow. Well, at least not necessarily tomorrow, for the next uh, couple of days. Uh, a name like Meta, right? Meta is just getting tighter and tighter and tighter. We had a nice trade the other day, uh, two points off this uh, 19 area. It's just getting tighter and tighter. It held really nicely off the five-day moving average. Is this thing ready for another leg up, right? As long as the market stays up. Uh, Square, you know, Square today, this is the highest close in its earnings formation. Is this thing potentially going to get above the 5350 uh, supply and keep going? Again, a name that's we're definitely worth watching. Look at Coinbase, right? You got Bitcoin surging. Look how tight Coinbase is getting, guys. Look at this. Look how tight this top is. It's been rejected off this top of the range here once, twice, three times, four times. Eventually, if Coinbase, and, and what, I, what I noticed about Coinbase, for all you guys, uh, especially with trading the options market, once you start seeing Coinbase get deep out of the money short-term expiration, that's what fires up the stock. That's what really, really gets it aggressive. So watch Coinbase in the next day or so. If it could finally get above the top of this channel here, if, if Bitcoin has one of these uh, surging moves, who knows? Maybe this thing uh, can start going crazy as well. You know, look at a name like TTD, for example, right? TTD, you know, gapped up and now it's just going sideways. Is it going to confirm tomorrow? Is it going to confirm the next day? Or is it not going to confirm at all? We don't know. But again, it's a nice tight consolidation as well. And the name we talked about a couple of days ago, look at Crowd, right? Crowd is just nestling on the Bollinger Band. If, you know, if the market continues to be strong, maybe this thing could finally confirm above the Bollinger Band and start moving up here. So there's a lot of names that are still looking pretty good. Do I want to be in anything overextended up 9, 10, 12 days in a row? No, of course not. Not at the strength. You know, a name like NVIDIA, you want to buy into weakness. You know, any day, uh, you know, that the stock opens up lower, the problem is the stock doesn't open up lower. It just keeps on gapping every single day. But those stocks you want to buy on dips because, again, they're so stretched out. If we do indeed get a pull, there's going to be a problem. You're not going to lose 50 cents on the video. You're going to lose dollars. So it's very, very important to kind of at least on strength, stay away from the video, but any type of weakness into rising support, that's where you want to be. And we kind of end this uh, abbreviated session with the cues. So guys, remember yesterday, we talked about the potential pregnant pause, right? I, I didn't think for a second this was going to be the, you know, the top. We, you know, we talked about the 73, 70s level. I know a lot of you guys uh, traded that level. I know a lot of you guys had really, really good trades at that level. Here's the problem, right? The bears did not finish off that job. The bears did not take out the previous day's range and at least test the five-day moving average. So it basically is telling me is there is no selling pressure right now, right? Tomorrow we could be having a different conversation. Uh, we could have a completely different conversation tomorrow. They say, hey guys, remember the, you know, how good the market was? Well, today you took down three, four, five days worth of selling literally at one candle. That's on the table. Remember, the further we go from a big level, and again, we are, you know, the 50-day moving average was, three, six, uh, was 64. This is $10 ago. 
So the further we go over a big, big major level like the 50-day moving average, the higher probability you could get pulled. But again, if you are going to be watching for stock gets pulled, just watch the previous day's range. That's it. That's all you need to do for waiting. Don't guess. Don't estimate. Don't anticipate. Just wait. Here's the other side, right? Here's the other side. The fact that the bears could not finish off the job and really stamp their double top here on the October 12 highs Guys, watch that 74 level, okay? Watch that 74 level. If the bears cannot uh, take control uh, you know, tomorrow early in the day, watch that 74 level because if the bulls start building off that 374, maybe we could get that really aggressive crescendo uh, week and run into that 378, 381 level. So we're set up on both sides. Uh, market continues to be good. The leaders continue to lead. They continue to put in uh, higher highs, higher lows. The question is, how long could this last? We don't know. Okay, I'm not going to guess, but we are always ready on both sides, and we stand ready uh, for a tactical entry on both sides as long as if there is a feasibility study and the probability is in our direction. Other than that, we're not in the guessing business. The last thing you want to do is try to be smart and forecast where you think a stock is going to go. You're not going to be doing this for much longer. So, guys, have a great night, everybody. Again, watch that 374 level for the next couple of days now in the queues. We know where it got rejected. We know now where it needs to build. And that will be a very, very aggressive level. And if that's not the case, watch the previous day's low channel. That's going to give you a very, very good uh, area of interest. And if that confirms that, you know there could be a violent pull. Guys, have a great night, everybody. God bless. Matter of fact, tomorrow is Thursday. I don't usually record a video on Thursday. It's usually my night off. Uh, if you are planning to join us in the webinar, hey, feel free. Try it out for 30 days. I think you will like it. Guys, God bless everybody, and I will see you all tomorrow. Take